welcome to the Israel First television program with myself, Martin Blackham, and with my wife, Natalie Blackham. Great to be with you uh, with a program that looks at Israel. We look at the news, we look behind the news, and today we have a very special Israel First update where we're giving you all the, the latest news from the newspapers and telling you a bit about some of the guests who are coming on and uh, giving you some feedback. Some of, uh, some of you have been writing in, and uh, we like to... Uh, receive your emails and tell you about the emails that we're getting. Well, the, the big news in Israel, this is as we've come into the studio, is uh, this is the front lines. It says, five years on, another Gaza war remains on the horizon. That's uh, from the Jerusalem Post. And then this is front lines. It says, assessing the damage. Uh, the Iron Dome faces challenges this week. It never had before. How will it do? So uh, the big news has been the... Um, a skirmish, the war in Gaza, and it says, according to local news services, a massive barrage of rockets fired at Israel. Over 220 rockets. Actually, it's about uh, 400 as of um, as of today, I think, or even over 400. And mortar shells were fired at Israel by Gaza terrorists Tuesday. Uh, girl ate seriously ill after collapsing running to a shelter. She uh, she actually had a heart attack, I, I believe, Natalie. Um, All right. Um, and she was rushed to hospital. Uh, two men were injured by shrapnel when a missile exploded on a major highway. And 39 Israelis at least needed uh, medical treatment. A rocket struck a factory in the town of Sederot. Sederot is really close uh, to the Gaza border and uh, Sederot and uh, causing a large fire that threatened to collapse the whole building. Uh, another rocket hit the, hit a home in the southern town of Netivot, causing a large amount of damage, police said. One also hit the roof of a home in the Eshkol region of southern Israel, while the family was taking cover in the bomb shelter. Uh, there were no injuries. Uh, a rocket struck the Route 4 highway near the Gan -Yav Yavni junction, uh, uh, injuring two men, as I said before, and causing significant damage to the road and several cars. Now, one of the interesting things is whilst it's, it has been very localized in the past uh, the Gaza terrorists firing rockets into southern Israel what was a bit different this time is it's been reaching into Tel further and further towards Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv Modi and Modi'in and even here where we have the studio we were able to hear an explosion uh, causing a huge amount of work in Israel Fortunately, not so much disruption, but a huge amount of work. Schools had to close. B businesses have had to close. Um, so when you mean when the schools are closed, it means that the parents have to stay at home. Right. So they are not going to work. So it's dis disturbing everybody. Just the fact that um, you have to be near to a bomb shelter. You have to be aware that the alarm could go off at any time. Mm -hmm. So this is... This is a, it's, it does affect you. I know. And we have friends. It's like I was phoning them and they are living close to Ben Gurion and I was saying yes I'm with my girls and we're listening to some nice music because we need to make sure that the children you know don't take it too bad and that it's not a trauma for them and uh, so it's important you know it's like you can see that everybody is disturbed we're trying to live a, a, the most normal life that we can but you can see especially in the south it's uh, traumatic it's very, for the people right. who live very close to Gaza. And every time you hear the alarm, it uh, you know, you have to run to the bomb shelter. And the alarm's been going continuously in a lot of the um, in southern towns. Thankfully, it hasn't been going uh, uh, in our area. But you know, mm -hmm. we you have to be ready for it at any but time. Now they've done something good because before you had like the alarm was going for a wide region. Right. But now they know where the missile is going to fall. So they, they really sh sh shorten, I mean, pinpoint more for the alarm. So people don't have this rush of adrenaline. And, you know, it's, it's not nice to, no. to live with uh, all this tension. So no. they are trying to do things to make life as possible, you know, as easy as possible. But you need to, to say that this happened, all these things happened because the government was, I mean, the IDF, went uh, again a terrorist in, uh, in Gaza, which was very important. And they knew for a long time what he was doing, but now they really learn to target the people and they have a new way of doing things because very often the terrorists are going to hide close to civilians. So now the, the IDF are doing an amazing work trying to make us living the most normal lives when they have really to fight 
and and really pinpoint on the on the arc terrorist. It's not just like little ones. It's the one right. who are organizing senior terrorists. Yeah, yeah, senior senior terrorist, and he was like also in connection with uh, Tehran, and he was doing like missiles while getting rockets while bigger and long range missiles. Israel is doing everything. Yeah. And, and you, you know that uh, there's amazing things going on in Israel with the construction and the work and the, the life that's changing in the country, how the improvements of infrastructure. But we have to, it's very important to know what, you know, that these attacks are going on as well. So it's a balance. You know, I was listening also, uh, sorry, on Facebook, I had some friends who are like tourists right now and they are in a in uh, Israel, but they were in the north and they were like, everything is fine, we're having a wonderful time. And it's true, if you are not under the fire in the south, right. uh, everything is normal. So for them, they were like so happy to be still in, uh, in Israel and discovering the land. So you have to understand that, you know, is, is this balance in Israel all the time. Right. And um, the amazing thing is the security services are really working very hard uh, to keep everyone safe. And this is the Jerusalem Post, and I'll get this on the camera. And if you can see that, it says 450 terror attacks stopped this year. 450 terror attacks uh, stopped in the year. And the head of Israel's internal intelligence agency said the use of high tech and cooperation with other security agencies has prevented over 450 terror attacks in 2019. Nadava Argaman, Chief of Shin Beth, Israel's domestic security and counterintelligence services said the specialist technology that they're using together with working with other organizations has uh, prevented all these attacks. He was speaking at the UVID International Conference in Tel Aviv and credited their success with the use of sophisticated technology as well as the cooperation uh, and having an extensive, of course, network with informants and counter in uh, conventional intelligence gathering techniques. So they're really working very hard behind the scenes to keep everybody safe. And, and again, you need to know that, that uh, a lot of things are prevented from happening mm. in Israel, Natalie. There's um, things that happen, but we are very grateful when sure. things are uh, prevented from, from happening as well. And, and, and all this information, even like some people in Israel, they are getting experts to know how to fight with the terrorists. And some other countries now, or sometimes like firms, are asking some Israelis to help them for security. So, the, you know, they are getting ex expert. It's sad in one way, but at the same time, they have really an expertise now how to fight terrorism because they know that they have to fight it. Because I'm sorry to say, but a lot of countries in the West, I won't say which countries, but in the West, and they are like, they still don't know, you know, um, yeah, it's terrorism, but... but and, I, and I was looking at the uh, coverage of this particular war uh, skirmish that we've had in the last few days, while, as we come into the studio from the other networks, uh, from BBC and people like that and it's really been like it's two parties involved there's no mention of terror from Gaza there's no mention of terrorists of terror attacks very little mention of the rocket attacks so uh, it becomes like a two a two-way thing when the reality is that Israel is dealing with the with a terrorist threat all the time and Netanyahu was saying okay look they are targeting civilians so this is a war crime. And not only that, they are hiding behind civilians, which is a double war crime that they are not protecting the people either. Right. So it's like, it's very clear. And uh, the media are not always, again, in the West, are not saying the reality of what's happening. And, uh, and we need to tell you what's happening really here in this right. country. And I know that a lot of you are watching uh, Israel advocates and will be but it's very important that you point out these facts to the agencies or whoever you're speaking to, uh, to the media, that uh, these rocket attacks are going on constantly mm -hmm. during day and night. And that, um, you know, the, uh, the, the civilians of Israel, they're attacking civilians. They're not That's attacking it. army. Exactly. These rocket attacks are not against army bases or military uh, basis per se, they are just, just indiscriminate against uh, against civilians. Now, one of the uh, stories which uh, came to my attention, and not many people have even picked it up, even in Israel, and this again is the Jerusalem Post, it says, Israel to lose Naha Arim, 
and Safat, Jordan on Sunday. Uh, these are areas inside of Israel. Now, uh, the story is, and again, not many people have picked this up, Natalie, is that these, these places were... Uh, I didn't know. He's you right. who are teaching me all these things. Well, the, the places were given to under the um, peace treaty uh, with, with Jordan. Jordan. Yeah. So let me just point them out on my map because I know that uh, we need to show where these are. These places are. Uh, this one, first of all, Naharim. This is uh, the map of Israel. You can see this is so. It's in land. It's not. I thought it was just on the border, but actually, if you see, it's actually uh, well in land inside of Israel. This is the Sea of Galilee, where many of you will have gone when you go on a tour of Israel, and you can see that this is an area of land, and now it's going to be under Jordanian control. So uh, presumably, we'll need to take our passport, Natalie, if we want to drive through this road. And then uh, the other one, which is again not quite so inside uh, as far as the um, it's on the, the road on the road ninety <coughs> to go to Elat. Yeah, it's just here. So it's just inside the border. But again, it's inside Israel. It's not this side or on the border. You expect, you know, I mean, it, it is closer, but it's uh, mm -hmm. inside of well inside of Israel so tell us, on the road. Tell us the story. So the story what? is that Israel is to lose it. Uh, because the agreement made in the 1994 peace treaty between the two countries, that's between Israel and Jordan, granted farmers access. The special territorial arrangement set out in the Israeli-Jordanian 1994 peace treaty appears to have come to an end. When Israel, Israelis will no longer be able to access land at Naharim because it's farming land. And so far, the diplomatic loss follows a tense moment in Israeli-Jordanian relations at a time when Israel has uh, had a caretaker government almost now for a year. So, which is a bit of blame shifting, you know, that's this person's fault or this person's fault. But the reality is that Jordan is now controlling. There are, I mean, I don't know what the exact arrangements are for Temple Mount, but I do know that now Naharim and Safar are now Jordanian territory. But it's very strange because it's inside of Israel and it's not a good thing. Uh, how they're going to do that logistically? Would the arrangements with Temple Mount, Israeli police and Israeli military uh, look after it, but they're doing it on behalf of Jordan, and I guess the same arrangement will happen there. But it's, it's not a good thing. Also, what's been happening in the Middle East is the movement of the United States troops out of Syria and uh, the effect that this has had on Israel. And in the Jerusalem Post, it says, Netanyahu offers gallant Kurds humanitarian aid. And in his first remarks since the withdrawal of uh, Syrian of American troops from Syria, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said that he's strongly condemning the Turkish military action. There's been Turkish uh, uh, military action in um, in Syria and offering humanitarian assistance to the Kurds. Israel strongly condemns the Turkish invasion of the Kurdish areas in Syria and warns against the ethnic cleansing of the Kurds by Turkey and its proxies, uh, Netanyahu said. Israel is prepared to extend humanitarian assistant, assistance to the gallant Kurdish people. And, uh, you know, they have been, what you might not know, because it has uh, been presented as a very complex war, but the, Kurd, Kur, the Kurds have been fighting alongside the Allies inside of Syria against ISIS, against... Uh, They've done a great job. Uh, the terrorists inside mm -hmm. of Syria. So, um, you know, this is why Netanyahu is offering them humanitarian assistance. He wasn't offering them military assistance. And uh, so, it, you know, one of the interesting things is, you know, doing this program, we know that we're reaching more and more people and uh, we really appreciate your emails. Wherever you're watching in the world, do email us. We've had an email in uh, from um, uh, the United States and this is from Guy and he says, greetings from New Mexico. So we uh, thanks Guy for writing in to us. He says, nice to see your television program on TV. And uh, we really appreciate Guy you taking, and he's written to us. Uh, and we really appreciate you taking the time to write to us. So please let us have your emails. And remember, it's because of your assistance, because of your support that we're able to do this program. We do need that. Uh, we have a donate page. Uh, it's on the website. But you can also contact us, email us at info at israelfirst.org and uh, we do need your assistance if you appreciate the program if you're watching today and you really uh, have enjoyed the programs 
then I'm speaking to you, then you do need to help us because if we want to continue this important work, then it's because of your support, isn't it, Natalie? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, this is interesting when, when you are speaking about the war and everything. You know, I have a lot of, of uh, friends uh, now all around the world, you're right. And some Christians are saying to me, hey, you know what, we're praying. And like we're seeing that Jerusalem might be again uh, attacked and I go destroyed. Sorry, not just attacked, but destroyed. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This like, I, it, like many Christian, okay, not just few, and it seems to have like it seems to have a rumor that that Jerusalem is going to be destroyed again. But like if you remember, Jerusalem was destroyed in 1948, and uh, they had to rebuild, and now they are restoring it. And even in 1967, there was a lot of damage to sure, Jerusalem. Yeah, but but now is like. Is like we on a new on a new path, and and uh, I mean I, I don't want that I can't say that I'm a prophet or whatever. But if you look in the in the word, if you look in Zechariah eight, is written and, and I picked that up because it, it really disturbed me when I heard these things and I was like thinking, wow, well, maybe we can tackle tackle a little bit today, and is this is in Zechariah uh, eight, and is uh, said. Uh, in English, he said, Though say Hashem of hosts, so is Adonai of Tsevahot, I am jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I'm jealous for her with her in for her with great fury. I say it also in Hebrew because it's beautiful and it's, it's very strong. It's Ko Amar uh, Adonai Tsevahot, Kineti Litzion, Kina Gdola. Verema gdola kinetila. So it means really that he's zealous for her. And he's like, hey, you know what? When you are zealous for somebody, and it means also jealous. Is jealous and zealous is the same name in Hebrew. There is no difference. So you can say jealous or zealous. And he was he's like, now this is my home, and I'm going to guard it. And I really think that uh, you know, we have to see it this way. And, and a lot of my Jewish friends think, you know, now Jerusalem is being restored and will be more and more beautiful. And uh, God is not going to allow any more uh, destruction on Jerusalem. So it's just something for you to, uh, to, to know that a lot of Christians are saying is going to be, she is going to be destroyed. But when we see here the reality, and a lot of our Jewish friends are saying, no, it's like being restored now. This is part of redemption, and we are moving into rede the redemption more and more. And we speak about that already. It's like you can see Aliyah is big, and, and you know, it's like it's the country is being restored. Yes, there is war, but like Jerusalem, God is more and more keeping her safe and say, do not touch her because you will be in trouble with me. And, if, and, and they can always email you, Natalie, if they've got yes, any questions. Yes, and we can converse about it and, and like propose you know, some ideas. But I really think that uh, we need to see that God is in the move mm -hmm. and like Zion is, is being lifted up more and more in yeah, front there's of a the very, nations. There's a very interesting scripture in the book of Amos which says that he's going to re put them back in the land, not, not again to be moved. Um, which seems to be more correct than yeah. the ones where it, the, there is a scriptures which say about Jerusalem being destroyed, but um, that this has been fulfilled. These yes. things have happened with the Romans coming and destroying Jerusalem, and then um, you know with she's 1948. She's been desolate. She's been desolate for two thousand years, N right? And now we can see the redemption coming and, into fruition. And in 1948, what? you may not know is that there were wasn't just uh, one army there were various armies there was the Syria uh, there was the Iraq I even believe it was one of the armies involved so there was multiple Arab nations so it was really the nations coming mm -hmm. against Israel in 1948 so and uh, and Jerusalem was cut in half and yeah and the synagogue like says, the, and the beautiful synagogue has been restored now the Ova synagogue was totally destroyed and and, and a lot all the Jewish quarter in the old city where it was destroyed. 
So they had to rebuild all of well, that. One of the questions uh, that have been asked, and uh, I'm going to try and give you a little bit of an answer uh, to your questions, is about the, what on earth is happening with uh, the governments in Israel. This is the Jerusalem Post. Gantz works to secure mandate from Rivlin. And then we've got another picture of um, uh, the Prime Minister Netanyahu with uh, Benny Gantz from the Blue and White Party. It says, uh, this is Jerusalem Post, it says, Likud blue and white leaders talk tough ahead of coalition talks. And then uh, one last one, this is going to be from Frontlines, uh, and it says, a ghost town full of restless spirits talking about the Israeli parliament. Well, what on earth is going on? And it's a very good question. Well, there's been an election, uh, but there wasn't... Uh, a, a, um, a major the majority wasn't able to be formed by Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. He was obviously the Prime Minister from the last government and he hasn't been able to form a majority. And then the pr uh, President, uh, Reuven Rivlin, had to give the mandate to the next person who could possibly form a coalition, who was Benny Gantz. And by the way, he's only got a couple of days left. Yes. He's left, got less than a week. And then, if he hasn't formed a coalition, and by the way, he was meeting with Lieberman today, but if he has formed a coalition, and uh, by the end of this uh, 28 days he's given, which is very soon up, um, if he hasn't done that, and they uh, then have a period, I think it's three weeks, where an MP from any party can try and form a government. They have oh, this... Oh, really? Okay. Well, I mean, it's a bit strange but they have the they have it in law and then there will be elections again third this will be the third elections within uh, a few months yeah and so the position is we do have a government in israel from uh, the, previous, the past yeah from the, <laughs> the past, past which is which is a caretaker government or a transitional government um there isn't a government benny gantz doesn't have a government he's just got trying to form something trying to form a government, he's not in charge. And then if he can't, then there's an election. So that's the position. We do have a temporary government. Uh, but the confusion is that we also have MPs who've been voted in who, <laughs> who were not in the temporary government, who were kind of in between. They're not, in, really. they're not, well, they're not in the temporary government and they were voted in after. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the, se in so, the second election. So uh, that's where some confusion can come. But there's still, by the way, there's still uh, legal work being done in the Knesset and it's still active. So we still and have so, a government. So is Netanyahu, but he was also the defense minister. But now he said to Bennett to right. be the defense minister, which is also a big thing. Which is a so big story. Like, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the recent news was that Naftali Bennett, who is uh, the defense minister. And what was interesting is in the Gaza conflict that we've recently had, um, he was having to do decisions but uh, and he's only just been appointed, so but he, he he's been in the government inside the cabinet for a bit, so he knows. And it was an MK. Yeah, and yeah. he's a member of Knesset, and he's also been in the military, so he does know things, and uh, he's been having to make decisions. So a lot of change, but just for you to know, we will keep you up to date, and we'll try. Uh, maybe we can have Dov Lipman in again, who was a member of Knesset, and mm -hmm. to explain to you a bit more in a bit more detail how this is all working because a lot of you have been asking. You're right. And you can go also on the Facebook because Martin is doing a great job to put some news every day so you can know what's happening on uh, the Facebook Israel First. We had done also a very good program with uh, Yuni Abramovitz and it was all about the solar energy and it's been on the newspaper, also Jerusalem Post and different ones because they are speaking a lot about the solar energy, energy. And that, do you know that in now in Elat, Elat is 100% uh, solar energy during the day, which is very good. And he had the goal that in 2020, uh, the south of Israel will be with solar panel, uh, solar energy, uh, 100%. And they are coming into these things. And now they want to go so for the, uh, in the north of Israel. Obviously, there is a lot of uh, political things happening because it's like you have the electrical grid and different way of doing the things. But like he's really pushing. And I think I have a bit of a, uh, I have here a few uh, numbers that he was giving, which was interesting, that he now already Israel 
uh, the solar the solar energy is 17 percent okay one seven and uh, which is already very good compared to certain uh, country but they want to go much higher and this is also what he said which was i think was very interesting for the people in israel to know they pay three or four times more with the normal electricity that they have right now it's usually with fossil energy and uh, fossil fuel and so when the people will be conscious that if it's solar energy they will have to pay three or four times less i think they will have more power to really push for solar energy does that mean having a solar panel on your roof yes and so obviously it's okay, so they it needs some room so they need to arrange how to do it but they were saying there is a there is enough roof to be able to do uh, the work but it's something and solar energy is clean so it's a very good thing for israel and they are like pushing on these things and if you want to see the program that we've done with um, yoni abramovitz it's very interesting you go on our youtube and you find him uh, solar energy and it's very very interesting and um, just to tell you a bit about the guests coming in, we've had um, Ido Netanyahu, the brother of um, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in the studio, talking about his book uh, about the uh, raid on Entebbe where Israel had to rescue hostages from the Entebbe airport. So look out for that program. And we've done also a very good program with Eliezer Ben Yehuda, the grandson of the Eliezer Ben Yehuda. And uh, this would be also very interesting for you. We had him eight years ago, but we say we, not, we need to do something again with him. And he was giving us some insight of the life of his grandfather. So it was very interesting. And if you want to, if you are watching the program and you want to know more, then do go to the website. It's uh, uh, www.israelfirst.org. And you, there's a lot of information. And, and uh, if you've been um, provoked into helping us, then... Um, there's also the donate button there as well. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been great to have you with us for this special Israel First update uh, made possible because of the generous support of our friends and donors. And uh, remember, we're the program that looks at the land, the people, and the language. Mm -hmm.